today I'm going to answer a question or well, a request that I got over uh, from one of our viewers. Um, and I'll read you what he has written. I have some friends from an international Gnostic community around me. I have contact with them because I like doing meditation together, etc. I like the energy of being together esoterically. Anyways, everything went well till I told them that I am homosexual. I thought it would be accepted because they are also working with the occult craft and have understanding of such things because they have more energetic feelings. But they said homosexuality is against the universal love. It is a degeneration trade back to the previous lives. I was shocked. Gnostics are a Christianity-oriented community, but they have also many mutual ideas with Hermeticism. Okay, my request is, can you please make a short video about sexual orientations, sexual life, from a hermetic point of view. I even don't think that I am wrong and do nothing against the universal law. Thanks. Okay. Man, I am sorely tired of this conversation. I have it over and over. Um... <clears throat> Number one, homosexuality has no bearing at all on universal law <laughs> or the universal love. It has nothing to do with sexual orientation. Period. <clears throat> this is just simple prejudice dogmatic prejudice, the repeating of something that they have been told, uh, that their religion has told them, or their culture, their society. It's absurd prejudice, just like racism, um, uh, sexism, um, all prejudice based on appearance, on on race, on co the color of your eyes or hair or your gender. Um, it's all the same. It's not thinking. There is no thought that goes into a prejudice. And there is no basis in reality for a prejudice. At <laughs> uh, <clears throat> any rate, prejudices are things that we must fight against within ourselves. Prejudice and bias. As hermeticists, we have to examine every single one. And we have to dissect them. We have to figure out what is at the root of our prejudices and our biases? Even the simple things, like things that we have an affinity for, or the opposite, things that repel us, we must, we must examine them and understand them so that they become part of our conscious awareness not just an automatic response. And prejudice is always just an automatic response that we have learned. It's like a negative character trait. It really is a negative character trait. So, <clears throat> does homosexuality violate any universal laws? Well, no. It doesn't. It exists in every species of animals on the planet. You know, studies have shown that homosexuality 
exists in every species of animal. <clears throat> every animal that has sex has heterosexuality and homosexuality as natural parts of its sexual expression. Heterosexuality is necessary for reproduction, <clears throat> and that's the context in which it exists in every species of animal. Homosexuality is not about procreation. It's about affection, and it's about sexual gratification, but so is heterosexuality. So is bisexuality, so is pansexuality, metrosexuality, whatever sexuality is rooted in either procreation or affection or power. Rape is about power. It is about power over and control. It's not about procreation or affection. So there's... Sexuality in and of itself has nothing to do with one's suitability to pursue hermetics or to pursue spirituality of any kind. What you do with your sexuality does, you know, if you're using your sexuality violently to control another or manipulate another, well, then that sort of renders you um, useless in terms of uh, any kind of spirituality. <clears throat> but that has nothing to do with homosexuality. <clears throat> sexuality as it relates to hermetics, <clears throat> I'm sure you, we're all familiar with the uh, sort of semi-pornographic image of a man and a woman um, in copulation having uh, a, a sex, uh, sitting together, joined together, and there's all this energetic flow going on. And it's very <clears throat> reciprocal energetic flow. And there is a male counterpart of that energetic flow and a female counterpart of that energetic flow. And they're each slightly different. Okay? Now, everybody thinks that that is the only way it can be. I have to tell you, it's not. It is an ideal. It is a way in which the energetic between two bodies works during a sexual uh, copulation. This is just one example of a man and a woman who have great affection for each other and uh, who are aware of their physical body. I mean, like they are in their physical bodies. When that occurs, that is a pretty accurate picture of what happens at an energetic level between the man and the woman. In rape, that does not happen. There is no energetic like that. Because that energetic is astral in nature. It doesn't arise from the physical act of uh, love me or physical act of sexual copulation. So love making aside here. 
it arises because of the astral emotional connection or lack of connection, that's what determines the energetic between two people. So it's like the physical manifestation of what is originating at an astral level. <clears throat> so, in the, the, the elderly couple that has been married for 45 years, who has sex merely because it's habit and they, have, they feel a responsibility to have it in their marriage, that energetic does not manifest in the same way. If there's no affection, that energetic is really minimal. It is focused on the self then and not on the pairing. Okay? So, <clears throat> that energetic looks very different with different couples. You know, different couplings. And, <clears throat> it's not so often distinct poles. Those are <clears throat> cultural more than anything else. We are programmed from birth with pink or blue, you know, we get dolls or we get trucks. You know, we're programmed from the moment we take our first breath. Our parents are projecting all these you know, male, female, male, female things. We have these roles that we play. So, <clears throat> if the female is a traditional female, female, and the male is a traditional male, then we have this polarization of energies that is extreme. <clears throat> but when those <clears throat> those roles are less rigidly held in, in one's life, those, that polarization softens and can be a really fluid thing, okay? So, <clears throat> when we have a homosexual couple, when we have two women or two men, there's a very different energetic that develops. You know, when there is true affection and awareness of the physical bodies, it's just as spectacular, but it doesn't have the same gender-based polarity. Okay. It's a different thing no less valid or spectacular or gratifying than, you know, the, uh, the stereotype. It's just different. And that's the thing about the universe. Everything in the universe is different from every other thing. Everything is unique in and of itself. So there, there, there is no right way. <clears throat> there is no universal law that says you must be this way and only this way. Those are cultural things. <clears throat> Those are about power over, you know keeping everybody in line and easily controlled. <laughs> Those aren't about organic life. <clears throat> and as hermeticists, we must look at these things. We must analyze them logically. And there simply is no logic to this kind of present prejudice. It's 
kind of prejudgment. When we enter into any moment with prejudice, we are limiting our experience. We are limiting our expression as well. <clears throat> we put up barriers to so much of the universe when we come to a moment with prejudice. It precludes us from experiencing the fullness of the moment, the fullness of the person if we come with a prejudice. <clears throat> or if we come with a bias that we don't recognize. It's so much like a prejudice. <clears throat> if we recognize our bias, we can set our bias aside and experience the fullness of the moment. And that is, you know, of course, our goal in hermetics. To experience the objective reality in each moment. The variety of sexual orientations, it, 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 it's part of the beauty <laughs> of the universe. The, the wonder, the uh, uh, infinite splendor of the universe is all of these different expressions of self and that they're beautiful. <clears throat> so uh, trying to preclude any given expression because it is different than our own is foolish <clears throat> because number one we don't have any say in the matter no matter what we say, no matter what we do, we're not going to limit the universal uh, variety in any way. <laughs> That's just foolish. So, the long and short of it is, there is <laughs> absolutely nothing wrong with any sexuality you might have because it's yours. It's not mine to say, number one. And number two, there are no universal rights and wrongs here. It just is what it is. Period. So I, I don't think I can really say any more there. Um, to my viewer, um, you haven't violated any universal law, and you certainly haven't done anything against the universal love. Whatever that means, I mean, whew, I know you to be a very loving person, and to say that you are doing something against the universal love, I mean, whoa. That just boggles my mind. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers things in some way for you. All right, that's it for me today. Bye-bye.